Good day, good day. Welcome to our lesson for today. And today I want to take you through still consolidation process. So basically we are continuing from uh, the previous lesson where we did consolidation process stage one, the ad accusation period. Now in this lesson we'll be doing stage two, the scenes accusation um, period. Right. Okay, just to recap, I'm just going to go through the um, timeline again. All right, just to show you where we are now. Okay, so we had something like this in our previous lesson. Right. Okay, so we just used, I'm going to use the same period I used in my first example. Um, first March 2019, starting year, and then ends on the 28th of February 2020. All right. And then uh, we also say that the ad accusation period was on the 1st of January 2016. Okay, that's just an example that I made. All right. So this was the current year. As in the, the financial period that we're reporting in, right? Um, that was the beginning of the financial period. That was, this was the year end. Okay. So this period will be given to you. All right. Then we went further to look, um, to look at all three stages that we have to work in. The first stage was at accusation. This is the date where it is finalized that uh, a particular company becomes a parent. And a particular company becomes a subsidiary. All right. So basically, this is where it finalized that uh, the interest was purchased and um, control was obtained. Right. So this is the eight accusation date. Just I uh, will shortcut it. Okay. Then we say that the period that falls in between at accusation and the beginning of this current year is known as since accusation all right so when we labeled it we label this as stage one this as stage two this as stage three okay and then from the private from the previous lesson we already dealt with stage one so this is out of the way so what we'll be doing today rather in this lesson is we'll tackle stage to end stage three okay so we're just basically going through stage two and stage three okay right so as continuation i'm going to take you through um the process again this is a summary of the process i told you the consolidation process so we go through the summary again okay so it says basically this is i'm getting this from the study guide right um or rather tutorial letter 541 page 44 okay so it says the basic consolidation process okay we spoke about this in our previous lesson consolidation process involves consolidation of all items in other words where you combine all right items of item by item in the statement of different parties involved in the group all right so the combination, combining, or add LD. Okay. So the first thing is uh, the consolidation of all items line by line. Then the second step, or rather the second step on the procedure, is elimination of common item. And the last. Uh, stay, uh, step of the procedure is elimination of intergroup transactions or other intergroup items. Okay, so consolidation of items where we combine it line by line. Here we are combining line by line. Okay, this is the easiest one we were just adding. Okay. So this is already out of the way then elimination of common items so we're going to talk about elimination of common item and come back to elimination of intergroup transactions 
All right, so what do they mean by elimination of common item? All right, so here we are, elimination of common item. This is basically saying, okay, this is the first adjustment which should be made in consolidation statement. All right, is the elimination of investment. So this is elimination of investment in parents' books and the owner's equity section in subsidiary in subsidiary books as at the date of accusation so elimination of common item this is gotten from as a continuation from the question that we did in the previous lesson right i took you through the analysis of owner's equity okay if you remember very well and we had to calculate goodwill we had to calculate the fair value adjustment the nci uh, value and all that right and basically also showed the consideration that was paid for the investment at the accusation date so all the transaction that happens at accusation date needs to be eliminated those are that is what is known as common items okay i'm going to just use one of the examples in here um, don't worry i'll find it just now right so this was something like what i had done okay i'm taking this example from the study guide page 59 okay this is something like what i've done right remember that one i had pearson limited um stanley limited morgan limited right and this one they used s limited and p limited because this was just an example okay so we had done something like this um the analysis of owners equity there we go that is what we had done uh just use a color analysis of owners equity of s limited right then as we saw at the accusation so they basically labeled this was the accusation period that we had done okay and then so the share capital return earnings we calculated the total share the total then we brought in the consideration as you can see there was no goodwill in this question so that means they use the proportionate the first method proportionate share or partial or the partial method all right that means if you use that there will be no goodwill and whatever you have already calculated here becomes the total for nci okay and then after that so basically they went to current year so these are all um adjustments at accusation so eliminating common item that they're talking about i'm going to do this in a journal and this journal is known as a performa consolidated journal it's a consolidation journal it's not a normal uh, journal that we do to account for an item in this one it's a performer consolidated journal in other words you're doing a reversal journal okay so performer consolidated all right i want to eliminate common items all right so i'm just going to avoid using the ruler for sake of time okay so i've got debit i've got credits my journal still looks like a normal journal but just remember i'm doing more of a reversal because i'm eliminating transaction right and i want to use this example because i want to show you how you can move from your analysis to the journal <clears throat> so what do i want to do i want to eliminate everything that happened at accusation that is uh, common items right elimination of common items so elimination of common item all right so <clears throat> all the amounts that were supposed to be credited will now be debited because i'm reversing right so share capital and return earnings these are equity items as we know all equity items increase on the credit side and the decrease on the debit side all right so i'm going to decrease them because i'm reversing right so i'm going to debit share capital and i'm going to debit return earnings 
So I come here and say share capital. Remember with general entries, you always start on the debit, right? So I'm going to start with the debit uh, account first, right? Share capital. Okay, this is a statement of financial position or even change in equity. All right, how much was my share capital? I'm going to use, I'm using these ones. It was 100,000. Right, then my return earning as well. Okay, my return earning is also an SFP or um statement of changes in equity item. And this was 50,000. I'm taking it from here. Okay, so this was a reverse of the all right. Instead of crediting, I've debited, so I've killed it. All right, and then is the NCI. All right, with NCI, I'm going to make sure I emphasize this. With NCI, you are not eliminating NCI. Remember, you're eliminating um the investment from the parent side and the equity from the subsidiary not the nci nci you are accounting for it okay i'm going to say it again nci you are accounting and then all the other items um like your, your investment and your equities the, those are being eliminated all right so you just make sure um you keep that in mind okay before we go there, so then I, there was a goodwill that we calculated. There we go. There was a goodwill. So goodwill also, I'm accounting for it. So I'm going to put this in, in color. Remember, I've just created an asset. Because of the goodwill, we have just created a non-current asset that was not in existence. Right. This is an SFP item. And how much is this? And remember, it's an asset. Assets increase on that debit side. I'm increasing. I'm accounting for an item that was not yet there. Okay, and if you look at my goodwill, it was twenty thousand. So it's a debit. I'm accounting. Okay, I hope you're together, right? Then the NCI, just like I was explaining, guys. Remember in the exam to write in full. Do write the nine controlling interest instead of just saying NCI. Okay, this is also an SFP item. I'm accounting for it. This NCI is just like an equity item. So I'll take the 30,000. Remember, I'm at accusation only. I'm not in any other period, but at accusation, right? And then 30,000. It's a credit because it's an increase in equity. I'm accounting. Okay. Then the investment is eliminated. So the investment is the amount of consideration that the, the parent pays, right? So investment in what's the investment in S limited. So P limited is buying interest in S limited. And the investment amount that he paid is 140. All right, so that is the elimination of common items that we're talking about. It's basically just eliminating what we did in our previous class, all right? Reverse all journal. Okay, and then you do the narration. So this was elimination. Elimination of investment or rather interest in S limited at accusation. Okay, guys, again, I've, I always say this in my classes. I'm going to say it again here. Narration, general narrations is just an explanation of the journal you have done. There is no standard or particular way of doing it. You're just explaining what you have just done. All right. Okay, so that is elimination of common items that they're talking about. It's this, this is basically the first performer journal that you do. Okay. So let's go back to our lesson. Okay, remember we were just looking at the summary of um, consolidation. So we have eliminated uh, common items and now we're talking about elimination of intergroup items. All right, so elimination of intergroup items normally um, happens since accusation and current year. Okay, so we are in that period, so we need to talk about the intergroup transactions. Okay, so we're going to go down a bit. We've already dealt with common item, elimination of intergroup transaction. I'm more interested in this one. All right, 
please pay attention to this it is always always going to be there and this is where you actually score marks in the exam okay elimination of integral transactions you score a lot of marks so i want you to pay attention all right i'm going to take you face through it then uh, i will summarize it okay okay yes okay, talking about taxation you can go through that notes on your own when you are studying right the first intro group transaction would be um bank overdraft and guarantees all right bank overdraft and guarantees i'm just trying to find a color that i could use okay so the first type is bank overdraft and guarantees right so what do we mean by that basically in this one what they're trying to say is if i'm the parent uh, and my subsidiary both of us either me the parent or the subsidiary can go to the bank and tell the bank to offset if i get to have a negative balance and an overdraft then they can offset these um against their positive bank balance all right but there are conditions that are attached to this for this offset to occur conditions are attached to it i'm going to use a different color for the condition that are attached to it okay so right so we're going to look at the uh, conditions. Hmm. All right. So a particular criteria needs to be, okay, I'm looking at this one. It's not giving, giving it to me the way I want it. All right. So I'm going to list it down for you. Okay. I'm going to list it down because I can see it is not uh, clearly given on here. Right. So the conditions for a bank overdraft to be offset. Number one. Okay. Both parties need to be in the same bank account. Needs to use the same bank. Okay. Both parties. Okay. Here I'm talking about subsidiary or parents both parties um should use the same bank so we're banking in the same bank right so for example um uh, if company a who is a parent um banks with standard bank that means a subsidiary should also bank with standard bank for the condition to happen for for us to do any offsetting we must both be in the same bank all right that's the first condition then the second condition is um we need to give permission all right permission must be given to the bank okay so we need to go to the bank and give permission for the bank to do that okay All right, we give permission to offset in the bank. Okay, only if we are both in the same bank. And when we're in the same bank, we can then say, I am willing, either the subsidiary or the parent can say, I am willing to offset my positive bank balance with the negative bank balance of my subsidiary or my parents whichever way vice versa right okay all right with that being said and then we continue so that was the first one bank overdraft and guarantees can be offset permission given all right and both parties being in the same bank then if that is not there they cannot do that okay right that was the first intergroup transaction then 
we're going to now we're going to deal with assets okay so i'm looking at the assets the first one is inventory intro group transactions of inventory right and i'm just gonna run through this so i can explain it on the side um, inventory counts in different ways right so i can have unrealized profit in closing inventory and unrealized profit in opening inventory so what do they mean by unrealized profit and in inventory where does it come from now remember when we consolidating we are becoming one right so it's just like you know husband and wife coming together and then they're looked at as being one it's the same story that happened here so when company a purchases company b both companies become one now, if company A sells to company B at a profit, that profit portion needs to be eliminated. That is what we're talking about here. So if this, if company A sells inventory to company B, uh, the profit on that inventory needs to be eliminated at year end. Okay, so that's what we mean by unrealized profit in closing inventory. The closing inventory, I'm going to eliminate it. Then, next year, I reverse the process. Okay, pay attention, right? I eliminate at the year end. At the beginning of the year, I reverse it, what was eliminated. Then at the other year end, I eliminate and reverse, eliminate and reverse. So I keep doing that until the assets that were sold to company B is now sold to a third party. I think I need to do an illustration of what I'm talking about. So, for example, okay. It's always very important. It's always very important to note who is selling to who. All right. So if company A sells to company B, so what happened? Company A, because he's selling, is the one making the profit. Then company B is purchasing inventory. So I'm only interested in the profit portion, right? Not the full amount. So let's say the profit was 20%. So I'm going to calculate 20% of whatever the amount was. Okay. Let's say um, uh, the closing balance. So I'm looking at the closing balance at year end. And the closing balance I'm talking about is the inventory here. So, I, so the closing balance of this at year end was maybe 20000 Okay, I don't want the whole 20,000, I only want 20%. Okay, I want to explain if they'll say on cost or if they'll say on selling price. All right. All right, so here, make sure you have your calculator ready. Right, so 20,000 times 20%. This is 4,000. Right, I will also calculate the taxation effect of this. So that means 4,000 um, times 28%, that's the tax rate. So that becomes 1,120. Okay, closing, remember? So what do you do? You eliminate both of this. Eliminate the profit portion and the checks attached to it. Eliminate. Okay. This was in year one. I'm just going to explain what I was talking about. Now, in year two, beginning of year two, what I'll do is I'm going to reverse what I did. I'm going to reverse this. Okay. This is then reversed. All right. This is at beginning of the year. And then at the end of the year, I check the new balance now. Say, for example, we had 20,000, right, last year. This year, the items that we purchased from company A, we sold 5,000 outside to the group, like to, to maybe clients, customers, just outside the group. And we are only left with 15,000. Okay, so I'm going to eliminate 20% of the 15. 
and do the text as well okay and then in year three for example i am left with zero at the end remember i'll reverse the beginning at the end there is no amount so there's no more elimination this is what i'm talking about okay because it was sold to third party there's no more elimination because it is sold to a third party but as long as it remains in the group i'll eliminate at year end reverse in the beginning of the year eliminate at year end reverse in the beginning of the year the process goes on and on and on and on all right so that's basically um what they're talking about by unrealized uh profits okay let me just before we continue i just want to go up and just list the intergroup transaction um, that we're talking about today okay so far intro intro group transactions okay the first one it was the bank um the first one was the bank balance and go guarantees all right bank overdraft or guarantees Okay. And here we're talking about the offset, right? And then there were condition attached to it. Okay, they need to use the same bank. Okay. Um, agree with the bank and give bank permission. And... permission to the bank <clears throat> to offsets right so that was that day number two we talked about inventory okay the reason why i'm writing because i want just to go a bit in detail all right inventory what happens is and here we're talking about sale right i'm just going to put it down nicely Sale of inventory. Okay, so this happens because of the selling inventory, and then we have to now eliminate um we have to eliminate um unrealized profit in closing closing inventory okay so we're going to, have to eliminate unrealized profit in closing inventory and reverse the unrealized profit profit in opening inventory okay so how do I then do the journal or the performa consolidated journal in both the states or both cases? All right. In both cases, how do we do that? <clears throat> With the closing, so what's happening? I want to eliminate the profit portion, right? For one company, it's coming out of the profits. For the other company, it's coming out of the inventory, right? So I'm going to debit either. Now, depending on the, the information I'm given, I can either debit this from gross profit, if I'm only given gross profit, or debit um, profit before tax, if I'm given profit before tax only, and if I'm given cost of sale, then I'm going to debit cost of sale. Okay, then... This is obviously profit and loss accounts. Then I'm going to credit the inventory. Okay, SFP. 
Right, and my general narration would be elimination. Okay, I think I'll have to remove this for sake of space. I'll come back to this one later. I think I'll need my space because I also want to show you the taxation effect of this. Right, so it's going to be elimination of unrealized profit. In closing, I'm at year end, right? In closing inventory. Okay, let's say this was in 2019. I'm just making an example. <clears throat> so I'm still going back to my example of 20,000. So I'm closing with 20,000. I only want to eliminate the 20. Um, I only want to eliminate the profit, sorry, and the profit was 20%. Okay, so 20,000, 20%. was 4,000, right? So I'm only eliminating 4,000. Guys, if you have cost of sales, you're just going to say cost of sales. Okay. If you have gross profit, then you start with gross profit. If you have just profit before tax, then you use that. Okay, but the ideal one is to use cost of sales right so i'm gonna debit cost of sales then i'm gonna credit inventory so for the company that is selling they we are decreasing it from uh, cost of sale gross profit or profit before tax né? but the company that is that purchased we are decreasing it from the inventory that they're keeping okay so that's the first thing you will do and what I'm doing here, even when I have to do the statement, you will also see it. I'll show you guys when I do a statement with you as well, together. Then there's a tax effect with this one. Okay. Now, with tax, um, we introducing deferred tax. For those of you that have not done deferred tax in FH 3701, you don't have to worry. Um, it is basically taxation in terms of temporary difference in terms of disagreement in accounting treatment and in taxation treatment according to the income tax act okay so that disagreement creates a taxation that is moved to the future as it has as in deferred to the future so it's known as deferred tax okay so deferred tax what you need to know and i want to show you a trick if you follow it then you're fine with pro forma consolidation journal deferred tax is normally associated with the sfp items statement of financial position items then we've got income tax the one we all know right it's calculated on profit so it's associated with the profit and loss items okay how to know which one to go where follow me with this one this is a trick i used and it's very helpful i've been teaching it to people and it really helps them so what do i do how do i know which one should be debited and which one to be credited there's many ways to know it but i'm going to give you a short trick that will solve all the stress and anxieties, right? So, if my profit and loss was debited and my SFP was credited, when it comes to tax, I'm going to do opposite because taxation normally does the opposite effect, all right? So, PL was debited, therefore, SFP will be the one debited and then PL will be the one credited. So, what did I do? I just reversed the effect of these all right then goes back to what i was explaining the deferred tax is the i the one going to the statement of financial position because deferred tax can either be a liability or it can be an asset so that means the sfp one is going to be deferred tax and profit and loss one is going to be the income tax Okay, so you just do the opposite of the main account. Then you do the calculation of the taxation. Remember, I'm taking that profit of 4,000 multiplying by 28% tax rate. Okay. All right, so that becomes 1,120, 1,120. And the narration could be that this is elimination. of unrealized um, elimination of the tax effect sorry elimination of tax effect 
or text implication of unrealized profit in closing inventory okay all right so i just want to emphasize on this 20 percent so with regard to 20 with the profit they can base the profit on two things all right profit percentage can be based on two things they can say um it's calculated on cost or they could say it's calculated on selling price or on sales okay so whatever the base basis whatever base they use that thing becomes 100 percent if it's a base it becomes 100 percent please pay attention to this so if i'm still using my profit as 20 percent right so because i'm basing on cost you know, so my my cost is going to be 100 profit will be whatever i was given in this case 20 therefore my selling price would be 120 right so i'm given 20,000. that is my selling price isn't it it's already a selling price that includes profit so i want to calculate my profit so this will be multiplied by what am i looking for profit and how much is profit 20 percent so 20 is my profit what do i have i've got sales and sales is represented by 120 so 20 over 120 if they're basing this on cost all right so twenty thousand times 20 divided by 120 and this is three 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 all right that was option one then option two if they're now saying um it's 20 percent on sales or 20 percent on selling price okay so my selling price becomes 100 whatever because i'm basing it right then my profit is what 20 percent okay so to get selling price is cost minus profit right to get cost is selling price my uh, to get to get selling price it's profit plus cost price but to get um cost price it's selling price minus okay this will give me my cost price so in other words my cost price is sitting at 80 percent okay let's go back to the example i'm given twenty thousand as a selling price okay what am i looking for i'm looking for 20 percent which is my profit over what i have what do i have selling price in this case it was based on selling price so it's over 100 and that will go to four thousand pay attention to how profit was calculated all right is this on cost or is it on selling price all right so it becomes a norm for people to just cram that if it's on cost price you say uh, that particular profit plus maybe if it was 10 10 percent you say 10 percent over 110 20 percent over 120 30 percent over 130 40 percent over 140 it just becomes a norm for people to cram it that way but the idea is this is the explanation behind it this is the explanation behind it all right then people say if it's on selling price just make it over 100 okay you can cram it that way or you could understand it whichever way that works for you you go for it all right but i have to explain to you because i have to make sure i am clear on where what comes from where all right so please note that whenever you do um profit calculation on unrealized profit remember to check on which basis is a profit based on okay so that is out of the way we did unrealized profit on closing inventory so then it's now unrealized profits on opening inventory opening in opening inventory remember the process guys i eliminate this year reverse next year eliminate at the end of the year reverse again until the asset is sold outside the group in other words sold to another customer that is not a subsidiary in the group all right so let's say i'm now in 2020 
Okay, I want to do my performer consolidated journals. Guys, remember, I keep on using the word, the word performer, right? Just to remind you that these are mainly uh, reversal journals. And these are consolidation journals, not just a normal journal. All right, so I'm in 2020. What do I do? First, reverse. Reverse the closing one then accounts for the closing of this 2020 so i reverse the opening right and please pay attention now i'm going to reverse but i'm with the difference is that the inventory uh adjustment is only done at year end when i reverse i don't reverse it at inventory i reverse it at returned earnings okay so let's go back to it i want to do an opposite of this so Normally, you are supposed to say debit inventory, right? But I'm not going to use inventory anymore. I'll take the inventory amount to the returned earnings. So I'm going to debit returned earnings. Okay, statement of changes in equity or even statement of financial position. Then, here, cost of sales was debited, right? Now I'm going to credit it. Or if I have gross profit or profit before tax as well. I'm going to credit it. It's an opposite, right? Cost of sales. This is a profit and loss item. The amount had already been calculated. So we just put in the same amount. We are just reversing. Okay, and then you can do the general narration. Okay, I'm not going to do that again. You do know it's an explanation, right? okay then taxation as well we'll do the same thing but remember the this is an equity items equity items are normally accounted for after tax so the taxation will go straight to return and not deferred tax pay attention i'm going to repeat this again because this is an equity item as in in other words a statement of changes in equity item are always accounted for after tax, after accounting for tax. Okay, so there's no need to take the taxation to defer tax. It goes straight to return earnings. So I want to do a reversal of this as well, just like I did here. So income tax will go on top, while deferred tax is supposed to go. Income tax will be debited, deferred tax will be credited, but remember, I'm not using deferred tax, I'm using return earnings. Okay, I'm going to do this one in a color. So, income tax, reverse, it's now debited. Okay, we have also calculated the amount. Then, the way I'm supposed to, to reverse deferred tax, I will just put it under return earnings. The taxation as well is going to return earnings because the amount of the equity item must be amount after accounting for taxation. Okay, so this was already calculated. I'll just come and put the amount. All right, and that's it. And then general narration where you explain the story, like what you have just done. Okay, so this was the reversal. All right, this is for opening inventory, right? And I remember I said now on the closing one. They managed to sell 5,000 outside the group and they left at 15,000, right? So now I'm doing another normal closing. So in other words, I'm doing this journal again. All right. So it's going to be debit, cost of sales, profit and loss, credit, inventory. Okay. SFP. With how much the closing balance of 2020 becomes 15. So multiply by 20%. Remember, this will depend on if it is on sales. So if I multiply by 20%, that means they're saying the best is also on sales. If they say this is uh, on cost of sales, I was supposed to say multiply by 20, divide by 120. Okay. So we're just assuming this was on sales. So 15,000 times 20 percent this becomes three thousand so eliminate three thousand from profit eliminate three thousand from inventory 
Okay, remember one party is making a profit while making a sale, and the other party is purchasing inventory. Okay, and then you do the narration. Okay, then we do the taxation again, guys. Remember what happens when it's tax? You just do the opposite. Okay, I just forgot to do this. You just do the opposite, right? So if uh, the normal accounts profit and loss was debited and SFP was credited, when it comes to tax, I do the opposite. So SFP becomes a debit, profit and loss becomes a credit. Boom. Which taxation account is going to SFP? Deferred tax. And which one is going to profit and loss? Income tax. Voila. Simple, right? Okay, so what you do, you just calculate the taxation amount times 28% because that's the tax rate. Guys, remember, always have your calculator nearby. Okay, so this is 840. Alright, and that's that's about it. That's how you do it. Alright. So I showed you the opening unrealized uh unrealized profit in opening inventory, mainly a reversal of the closing balance of last year. And I've also shown you um twice how to do the unrealized profit in closing inventory. Alright, so with inventory, it's basically out of the way. Then we move from inventory. Now we go to property, plants, and equipment. So the next one we'll be dealing with is property, plants, and equipment. Okay. So let's go back to our list and edit. So that becomes the third intra group transaction that we have to deal with today. Okay. PPE, I'm just going to call it PPE. We all understand where PPE comes from, property, plants, and equipment, right? Okay, now, PPE are divided into two. Number one, let me call it triple one. These will be non-depreciable assets. All right. Example land. Remember land, there is no depreciation. Okay? And then there's gonna be another one. Uh let me just put it on there. This is depreciable This is depreciable assets. All other assets except land are depreciable assets. For example, e.g. machinery. Alright, e.g. machine, vehicle, etc. Alright, so we divide into this. Now, what are we talking about here? We're still talking about un, uh, el uh, elimination of unrealized profit, right? So, in other words, we're still talking about selling within the group. Okay? So, we're still talking about elimination of unrealized profit when we sell within the group. Unrealized profit. And this time, we're not talking about inventory. We're talking about... Um, on sale of PPE. All right, so let us go to it. So what do I need? When I have um, a sale of a non-depreciable asset, what am I looking for? I want my selling price, selling price, and I need my carrying amount or the cost. In fact, land doesn't depreciate so cost. So I'm just going to make my example, all right? So let's say the selling price is hundred and fifty thousand, and the cost price was hundred thousand. Okay, what am I eliminating? Just like I said before, I'm eliminating the profit. So the profit in here is fifty thousand. Agree? 
Right, this needs to be eliminated. Now, who sold to who? Okay, so let's go to that. Who sold to who? I've got company A and I've got company B. I'm just going to say company A sold to company B. So therefore, company A makes a profit. Company B buys the land, but what am I eliminating? The profit. All right. And I'm going to show this in a journal as well. Just like in the previous one, I'm going to show this in a journal. Okay, I just have to, I would think I have to remove this so I can get some space for my journal. Right. A bit. Uh -uh. I started with the wrong one. <laughs> Debit should always be first. Right. So I've got David. Why must I keep saying David here? Uh, let me do both. So it's David, and then it's credits. right all right so what do i want to eliminate i want to eliminate the profit and also the land on the other company right from one company that makes a profit i eliminate the profit the other company that gets the land i also eliminate the profit portion of that land all right so um, let's start now when i'm accounting for profit on sale of an pp item normally the profit will be put under other income so other income is an uh it's an income item which is normally supposed to be credited and because i want to eliminate i'm gonna have to do a reversal journal so i'm going to debit my income all right so i will debit other income this is a profit and loss account then i will credit my land from my ppe right this is an SFP account. Okay, so this one is quite easy, right? But it's just almost the same as the explanation that I gave with inventory. So I debit my income that was supposed to be credited to reverse and land. Remember, land is an asset that increases on the debit side. Now I'm going to credit it to decrease it. Okay, I've already calculated the profits. Um, fifty thousand to fifty and fifty thousand okay so that's the first account you do just like inventory here as well you need to eliminate taxation don't forget to do narrations if you're asked to do so this is just explanation all right now tax again guys remember the trick that we are all using we just do the opposite so a debit becomes a credit uh so pl was debited therefore pl will be credited and SFP was credited, therefore SFP will be debited. Right. Which tax account goes to SFP? Deferred tax. And which tax account goes to profit and loss? Income tax. Awesome, right? Now, there's something new we need to learn, right? So, when calculating taxation on land, we need to keep in mind that land is realized through sale. So capital gain will kick in. And remember, guys, when you're calculating capital gain, we calculate tax at 80%. Right, so what happened here? Let me just put my taxation here. And I want you to note, né? this only happens for land and for market-to-market -market reserve. Everything else is 28%. Okay, so... Here I'm saying my taxation rate is still 28, but because capital gain is kicked in, I'm going to multiply this 28% by 80%. And this gives me 22.4%. Okay.
Okay, remember you use this for land or market to market reserve because these are realized through sale. The rest are realized through you, so we just multiply straight by 28% just like we did with inventory. All right, hope you're still with me. Hope you're still best friends. Okay. So then I'm going to calculate the 22.4% and you guys know where that comes from. So my taxation, I'm taking the profit was 50,000, multiply this by 22.4%. Okay, calculator, have it close. Okay, so this is 11,200. Voila. Awesome, right? Okay, so 11,200. Here we are. I have eliminated the profit and I have eliminated the taxation. So that is done. So with land, it's easy because there's no implication of defect, of, of, sorry, of depreciation. Then with depreciable assets. Okay, there's quite a lot now. All right, that I need to put in here. So there's much more if energy and effect that needs to be put here. So, I need the selling price. Okay, so let's say my selling price was 200,000. I need the carrying amount. And please pay attention. I need the carrying amount, not the cost. What makes up my carrying amount? It's the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. Okay, cost minus accumulated depreciation. At date of sale at the time that it was sold what was the accumulated depreciation minus this from the cost to get the carrying amount please pay attention okay i know there's quite a lot but guys remember watch it over and over and over again right until you get it okay so i need my carrying amount so for example the carrying amount is um let's say okay let's just make it 120 so my carrying amount is 120 if i'm not given i have to calculate it okay you do know how right cost minus accumulated depreciation the calculation can be really broad but it's still the same logic still the same thing so you don't have to worry so much here right so what's my profit remember i'm interested in the profits Okay, so my profit is 80. So this is still the same as just that we did with land, right? My profit is 80. Now, the only problem, let me do my taxation as well. I'm just going to do my taxation as well um, on the side. So that was my profit, then my tax. This, remember guys, this is a depreciable asset. So it still adds 28%, okay? So 80 times 28%. I'm going to do my taxation 80 times 28 percent this gives me 22,400 okay so that's my tax right now this is the difference now I need to take into account the depreciation um, as well I'm eliminating profit but because the time it was sold it has already depreciated I'm also have to eliminate the depreciation portion of these profits guys you're eliminating the depreciation portion of the profit not the selling price not the carrying amount but the profit all right so i'm going to have to eliminate i'm going to have to write it down also eliminate depreciation on profits Okay, this is an NB. Right, what do I need for me to do that, right? I need the profit itself. So in this case, the profit is 80,000. And what else do I need? The remaining, the remaining useful life. Okay, the remaining useful life is what is needed here as well. 
for me to go about it. Okay, not the total useful life from the beginning, but the remaining after that sale. So if the asset was purchased two years ago and we decide to sell it now within the group, when I'm eliminating, I'm looking at after two years. So if the total useful life was, for example, five years, two years has already passed. It's only three years left. So I'm going to calculate depreciation on the three years that is remaining. That is remaining, right? So my depreciation calculation will be, I'm just using for the, the same example, 80,000. Divide by three. Okay, depending if I've used it for the whole year, or I could also say uh, for that current year that we are working in, only six months was used. Okay, so I'll just multiply this by six over twelve. I'm gonna do an example that will make more sense. This I wanna do a question that will make more sense. So this is just an example that I'm giving. All right, so eighty thousand divided by three. Multiply by 6 over 12 because we this happened like 6 months within the year. So depreciation becomes 13,333. Okay. Then I am also going to eliminate the taxation as well on the depreciation. So 13,333 multiplied by 28% a depreciable asset. So my de my taxation on depreciation is seven three three. Okay, so as you can see, four things happens when I sell a depreciable asset within the group. Okay, four things. First thing is to eliminate the profit. So number one is eliminate the profit. Number two, eliminate taxation on profit. Number three, eliminate depreciation on profit. Number four, eliminate taxation on depreciation. So four things happen, but with land, only two things happen, eliminate profit and eliminate tax. But when it comes to depreciable asset, there's also an additional elimination of the depreciation on profit and the taxation on the depreciation on profit. All right, so how do I do my journal? And this is where we're gonna end today. Okay, uh, this is where we're gonna end today because the other issue group transactions are easier we just run through them All right so this is how i'll do my journal credits debits okay guys remember this is a performa consolidation journal just like to emphasize all right first thing to do is eliminate the profit remember i'm eliminating profit that was a credit item i'm on debited so other income just like land other income statement of profit and loss always indicates so my profit was eighty thousand. okay and then i'm eliminating let's say it was machine for my PPE, this is statement of financial position, eighty thousand. Okay, and then you give it an explanation, a narration that you're eliminating unrealized profit on sale of machine. Okay, then eliminate the taxation, guys. Remember again, what happens with tax? I'm just going to swipe right. So profit and loss becomes credited. SFE becomes debited. Which taxation account goes to SFP? Deferred tax. And which taxation account goes to profit and loss? Income tax. Remember, we keep doing this, right? This is a very nice way to know, to try to remember it, so you don't have to worry so much about taxation. Okay, so I think we've already calculated this one as well. Let me just sure, go through it. So it was 22,400. 22,400, 22,400. Okay, that was the taxation. Remember four things would happen, right? Then the depreciation, I'm eliminating, guys. I'm eliminating, I'm not accounting, I'm eliminating. Depreciation is an expense and expenses are normally debited. But to, to eliminate, I'm gonna do opposite, all right? So as you all know, the, uh, the contra accounts of depreciation is normally Accumulated depreciation, right? So I'm gonna debit accumulated depreciation, okay, SFP, and I'm gonna 
credit depreciation because it is a reversal. Okay. Profit and loss. I already calculated it was 13.33. Okay. You also give the explanation. Then the taxation, guys, again. What do you do with tax? Opposite, right? So SFP becomes credited. Profit and loss uh, becomes debited. Which tax account goes to profit and loss? Income tax. Which tax account goes to SFP? Deferred tax. Okay, we had calculated this, so it was 3733. 3733. And that's about it. All right, so those are the major um, intro group transactions. Those are the major intro group transactions. I'm just going to look at the, the last ones so we can close for today. Okay, so we looked at inventory. Okay, we looked at inventory. All right, we also looked at PPE. Hmm. And then, all right, so the other one would be dividends. Uh, dividends of subsidiaries and then debentures or loans within the group and finally in payment of goodwill so I'm just gonna look at these all consecutively okay so dividends loans or debentures and in payment of goodwill and then we close for today so that was number, this was the third, right? So we go to the fourth one. Okay. Elimination of intergroup dividends. Hmm, so intergroup dividends. Okay, this is easy. I'm just going to do this in the journal. Already, it's quite easy. Okay, so what happened? All subsidiary in the company, the dividends that are received by subsidiary needs to be eliminated. Okay, dividends received needs to be eliminated. And when we're receiving dividends, this goes to other income, right? So I'll start with other income. <clears throat> so we'll have other income. Okay, profit and loss. Okay. Then, well, so I'm going to debit my other income. Then I'm going to credit the NCI portion of the dividends. And I'm going to, um, all right, so it's basically I'll debit it. I'll debit my NCI, I'll debit other income, and I'll credit the dividend itself. Okay. So this is S of PUS. Stable changes in equity. Dividend also goes to taking of changes in equity. Right. So, for example, um, B Limited um, declared or paid dividend of, of uh, 10,000. Okay. So, 10,000 was declared here. Okay. Then, A Limited, which is the parent, has only 80%. So, I'm going to take 80% of the dividend. As dividend received for the parent, so 10,000 times 80%. In other words, I am going to reverse the 8,000. This is reversed. Then for NCI, just like I was saying in the beginning, here I'm accounting, right? So the NCI, we have 20%. Here I'm accounting for dividend. Remember, dividend decreases equity, right? So 
this is elimination this is accounting and this is also elimination I eliminate this eliminate this account for this all right that is that um that was intro group dividends then there is intro group loan Right, with intro group loan, this is very much simple as well. Um, debit, credit. So, we cannot give loans to each other, right? So, we're going to have to eliminate the loan. Okay, so the liability will be debited and the investment will be credited. So, if a limited gave a loan to be limited that is an investment when i'm giving you a loan i'm investing in you right that's an asset so the asset normally is supposed to be debited or be credited then you who is receiving so loan from a limited will then be a liability because you have to pay it back right so i'm going to debit a liability so loan from Loan from A limited. Let's say it was hundred thousand. Then this was a liability I reversed by debit, right? Then loan to B limited. Okay, in the company of A limited, I'm now going to credit that investment to reverse them. Just doing an opposite. So that is loan, and the interest on the loan as well will also be um eliminated right for one company who's investing it's going to be interest income and interest income goes to other income okay guys remember always to right other income this is where i get i put my interest income right and then the other one will be finance cost where my interest expense is Okay, I'm just doing an opposite and, and expense is supposed to be debited is now being credited just to reverse it, right? So let's say it was 10% interest, so 100,000 times 10%. This is 10,000. So I eliminate that as well. All right, guys. Um... So basically, I gave you the main, main uh, intro group transactions that you can come across, but do not hesitate. Um, you know, you will be able to figure out the rest in the question because they will tell you that it was an intro group loan, intro group transaction. You will be able to figure out things like uh, management fees. Okay, so A Limited provided services to B Limited and B Limited is paying them. They're not supposed to. Uh, they're not supposed to owe each other in any circumstances. They're not supposed to give services or sell anything in any circumstance. If you come across any of that, it's an intergroup transaction that needs to be eliminated. Okay. And also, lastly, just remember, um, impairment of goodwill. Impairment of goodwill. This is basically goodwill losing value. Okay. So in this one, this one, we account for additional expense. Please pay attention to this. Here we account for, we are not eliminating, we account for additional expense. We account for an additional expense because the impairment loss is more like depreciation, right? It's just an expense. Impairment loss. This is an expense must go to profit and loss okay we'll deal with this in more details when we do a question all right guys so this comes to the end of uh, today's lesson so i managed to cover both stage two and stage three of our consolidation stage we did its accusation of previous lesson in this lesson we did since accusation and current year because all these each group transactions that i took you through are what affects since accusation and what affects uh, current year. All right. So it was nice. I hope this lesson helped you. And remember, if you don't get it the first time, go back, watch it again and again and again until you get it right. Okay. We'll be 
waiting waiting to hear from you and we'll be glad to help you it was nice thank you so much see you on the next lesson